These are my first impressions on the Downshifter 12 by Nike. Throughout the video, I'll give you my thoughts on the shoes so far, when wearing them, while running, training, and casually. The Downshifter 12 released at some point during the summer, and the shoe retails for 70 US dollars, which is $10 more than the Downshifter 11 last year. But as we'll see throughout the video, the price increase was definitely worth it. I got these on regular US size 11, or at least that's what I thought the first time around until I realized that I didn't, but it all worked out because the second pair was the right size and I can confirm that they fit true to size. Also keep in mind that Nike does offer extra wide sizing options for this shoe if you think you might need one. Now I had very low expectations for this 2022 version of the downshifter after an underwhelming experience with the 11 last year but it is safe to say that I've been proven wrong. Although the shoe box was something that definitely threw me off when I first saw it as Nike didn't send an orange shoe box as part of their move to Sierra initiative and instead they sent the shoes inside a brown shoe box that also acts as a shipping box at the same time if you want to return the shoes. And while these are not considered part of the next nature models, they are made up of at least 20% recycled content by weight. Even with the weird box and recycled content, the shoe is better all around compared to the 11, but the biggest improvement for me has been the midsole. The new and taller foam that Nike used for this shoe is a lot more cushioned and stable. Running with them was quite comfortable and it was very surprising considering how rigid and low the foam was on the 11 last year. Something to keep in mind about the foam though is that it's not as responsive since it doesn't have any air zoom units but it can definitely get the job done for shorter or longer distance runs. Or also if you're a beginner as Nike claims that this shoe is meant to help with the first steps in the running journey. And I have to admit that this shoe would be great to get started with training or perhaps shorter races as the price is very decent for the features and quality you get. It also provides a very good balance of cushion and stability, which tends to be helpful if you're a heavy runner or if you tend to overpronate. But obviously consult slash ask your doctor first about this since I'm obviously not a professional. And the shoe features an overall more squarish design that definitely looks aesthetically better than the 11, but it also reminded me a lot of the Span 4, except for the fact that, as mentioned already, this one doesn't come with the air bubble. And this design also complemented the midsole to create a very stable and secure feeling throughout the entire shoe. Something else that changed from the 11 that was quite noticeable was the less narrow fit at the midfoot. Nike ditched the cables and they added a band that works with the laces to adjust better to your foot and keep it more secure as the laces get more adjusted. Basically the same purpose as the cables last year, but without making your midfoot feel uncomfortable. The shoe still feels more on the narrow side though, so if you want something with more space and a looser fit, then consider the extra wide sizing options. The toe box also got a bit more roomy and not as lengthy as last year, which felt great whenever my strides hit the ground. Combining the this extra room with the cushion from the foam turned into an overall very decent experience that makes me believe this shoe is very much worth its price tag. The only other shoe that has given me that impression this year is the Renew Ride 3 which means that shoe and this Downshifter 12 are now contenders for not only most improved shoe but also shoe of the year. One of the things I love about the Renew Ride 3 is that it is very easy to wear for running and training and this is the exact same case with this shoe. The stability that you experience when running translates 100% to training and it helps a lot with maintaining proper form and it personally helped me with keeping a proper technique while boxing. The overall secure fit was also great but flexible at the same time. This Downshifter 12 is not a light shoe though so it's something to keep in mind as they are more chunky and they don't feel as aerodynamic as something like the Renew Ride 3 or even the Downshifter 11 last year which was perhaps thinner and more tapered. The upper is breathable, don't get me wrong, and also a huge upgrade from last year, but the extra foam and height at the midsole definitely add up on the overall weight of the shoe. But this wasn't as big of an issue when wearing them casually, however, as I think that the chunkiness is quite manageable and the foam helps out a lot with making them comfortable. This colorway has also been amazing, even though I was hesitant about it when I had to reorder the shoes, but as soon as I saw them out of the box, I changed my mind. The shoe looks great with multiple outfits, and I would and have worn them with jeans. Something I did notice is that they are a bit loose at the ankle with thinner socks, but you do have two extra lace hoops that could help with adjusting the fit. But even with the shoes being adjusted, this Downshifter 12 is miles ahead of its predecessor, and if you're considering which one to get between the two, definitely go for this one. I will 
probably potentially at some point make a comparison video between the downshifter 12 and 11 but in the meantime make sure you watch the first impressions for the latter if you haven't already